Hey, IDS 302, Summer Session A. It's May 31st. Good riddance to May, right? Hasn't really shaped up too well. I hope everyone's doing good out there and that you're um, staying healthy, staying safe. Um, this is an introduction to Module 3. But, of course, they overlap, so we'll take a look at some things. I want to open with... Um, a little more of uh, talk about IDS in the real world and things that are resonate with this course. So one of the things I saw uh, was a research report, research paper done by um, uh, a number of health experts, researchers. Uh, if I could turn this around without knocking everything over. I could show you this. I'll, I'll include the link just because, I mean, you can't see it, but it's an extensive research paper that was published. And what does published mean? That it was peer reviewed for efficacy. And by the way, they have charts, graphs, things on here. And it is uh, regarding, uh, they do an abstract here. This is like research at the running level. We talk about what we're doing is basic research and we're not going to utilize a few of the things, but in the, in the interest of explaining what this is, the abstract talks about the uh, COVID-19 pandemic and about certain cases and uh, the results. Um, now, they, they divided the results uh, into outbreaks. Well, not the results, they divided what they found were outbreaks divided them up. And their, their conclusions, very conclusion was very concise. It says all identified outbreaks of three or more cases occurred in an indoor environment, which confirms that sharing indoor space is a major SARS COVID-2 infection risk. So looking at that, I noticed they used the absolute all. Okay, that's important, but they can use that here because they that's what they found. They found all of the identified outbreaks of three or more cases occurred in an indoor environment. So they were looking at the uh, the spread, uh, the, the infection rate and how it's dealt with, because at first, as you remember, we were wiping everything down, didn't know what to touch and, and, uh, and such. So, but now we're letting up on that and finding out that grocery bags, doorknobs, things like that. Well, we need to be careful. The much more, uh, uh, way to catch it is through the air, through talking, through being with people that are infected or asymptomatic. And that's how you get the viral load that would be required. Interesting research, talk about the funding here, but this is research, talk about their methods. They go through all kinds of different um, aspects of this research paper, discussion, findings, things like that. Now they don't, they use line breaks between the paragraphs, not paragraph indents. Okay, so I should probably take my foot off the gas on that one. Um, but I just, I'm old school when it comes to paragraph indents, but I guess if you want to separate things by an extra line, I won't uh, do anything about that. I'll include this link, by the way. Okay, just gonna take a look at what a, what a real high-end research paper looks like now that you're into this, right? Okay, there's another one um, uh, about one in, COVID, one in 10 COVID-19 patients with diabetes die within a week, study finds. Uh, again, a study is done by French researchers, and um, it was published in the journal Diabetologia. means it was peer-reviewed research. They looked at more than 1,300 patients. They identify certain things. That's an interesting one as well. And I'm just talking to you because, again, I want you to get out of this class that you can be a better consumer of knowledge, okay, to understand that research backs up things, okay? It just doesn't say that, hey, if I shove a you know, a, a light down my throat, I'll kill the germs. Okay, where's the where's the resource? Where's the citations on that? Where's the research, right? Okay, um, so I think, uh, let's see, it was a quote I used. Eh, it doesn't matter. Okay, also I got into, obviously, all the issues that have been happening in society this last few weeks. We haven't had enough with a pandemic and this year with a um impeachment, a pandemic, uh, you know, we've got, and now we've got these social issues. Uh, I've always felt that this, this theory that I 
adhere to because I I've tried to explain certain things to friends, family, discuss, not tell them what to think. But how do we look at this? That you know, there there's this scientific attitude out there that researchers are always looking for a theory of everything. You know, that's the ideal. That's the what do they call that? The holy grail. Um, but there's a theory called the theory of social complexity and wicked problems. I'm going to include that link as well. It's actually from a book, Wicked Problems and Social Complexity. I've always found these issues like the ones we're going through, they're very complex. They're wicked problems. And that's a term used in, in research and science and soci- social sociology. But they're there's complexities involved, okay? And to be very shallow in in any analysis or spreading analysis of, oh, they're just doing this because of this. Oh, it's just these, it's just those, okay? There is complexity here. And if you're gonna be a honest to yourself as a thinker, as a consumer, it you're be, it's behooven <laughs> of you to uh, look for ways to look at things. Again, going back to epistemology and the concepts and terms we talked about last week um, in, uh, in, in regarding this. Okay, so those are things I wanted to bring up, and I know that was six and a half minutes, but I think it's important because we're talking about what it means to be an integrative thinker and an interdisciplinarian, okay, a critical thinker, all right? So Easter egg number one is integrative thinkers, all right. I want us. To, I want you to think of yourself as an integrative thinker, as an interdisciplinarian. Okay, it's very important as we look at the world and as we try to solve problems, the wicked problems, and go through the social complexities. Right. Okay. So let's talk about the topic approval. I I have a little tweaks to do on the instructions. I realize, for the most part, guys, you chose well. Um, you gave me reasons for choosing things. I like that. Okay. But remember, this was a very informal type paper to communicate, consider, and decide on the topic. <clears throat> so there was a lot of me, 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 me in this paper, right? Because, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to research this because I like this. I do this. I want this. You know, that's fine. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, all, I'm all okay with that. All right. But remember... Now we're getting into the step up your game portion of the show for the next uh, three, four, five, six modules. Actually, step one will be due tonight, uh, and that's also an important paper. Um, but we're going to take ourselves out of it now, okay? Because, you know, if you were to ask me, you know, what I, what I like to do, what I, you know, what do I like to, what do I like to do? Um, would I say breathing? I could, might be sounding like a joke, but breathing is inherent. I like to breathe. Breathing is a key component of my lifestyle. So the reason I'm getting at that, I don't know what these lights are glaring. I don't want to get, um, I mean, I'm, I'm comparing that, making that analogy to you deciding on what you want to research. I already know it now that it's something you're interested in for whatever reason. And you don't, you can put that aside now. When we talk about a researcher doing research on a particular issue, the researchers that just I discussed doing the COVID-19 research, they didn't go through a line saying that we wanted to, you know, research this because we were interested in it because I think I have it, uh, you know. Take yourself out of it, okay? So that's what's going to be really important going forward that I don't want to see I, me, my in your papers from here on out, the papers that do deal with the steps here, okay? Um, My glaring here. Uh, Okay, so remember that the research, it's it's about discovery more than it's about compilation. It's about analysis, it's about identifying certain things and and, um, staying away from, I think that's in the book, hold on. Okay, so that's going to be important. Again, I want you to still get the big picture. It's research, right? Now, I want to get into a little micromanaging again. Capitalize the disciplines. They are proper nouns. 
Don't capitalize the word discipline. That's not a that's not a proper noun. But the disciplines you're using are cap are proper nouns. Again, biology, capital, economics, capital, business, capital, law, capital. Okay? Okay. I I know I'm repeating myself many times here, but you know, if you're in my shoes, you'd know how how not often that gets through. Okay, so I really want to emphasize it. Um, all right. Now, module three, it may look a little easier, but it's not, okay? Um, because now we're stepping up our game and starting to get into some real, you know, academic writing and reading, okay? And uh, we are going to um, talk about the paper again, all right? You did your topics. They were very general, weren't they? I mean, let's face it, they were very general. They weren't really drilled down. So but we need to add some specificity there. We need to target it more. We need to draw in the parameters, okay? Because it's like saying, I want to research the effects of climate change on Phoenix. What are you talking about? No. You can't do it, okay? Climate change in what? In the household? Individual families as a city, in the economy, in the in the environment. There's way too much there. You follow me? You have to pare it down. So even if you're talking about I'm going to do research on marijuana, well, again, we've got health issues, we've got legal issues, we've got agricultural issues, um, we've got so much to deal with in those areas. So we need to bring it down. So I had you do the your topic, and you're going to do your primary sourcing and things like that. But I want you to start thinking now about how you're going to bring it down specifically. And here's what you're going to do. And you want to know what you're going to do. Here's what you're going to do. Okay. You're going to gather data. And I think I said this already, right? In a survey, a quantitative survey, which I will show you how to put together because that fulfills that requirement in research that you're bringing something new to the table. Yes, you're looking at all these other things, but you're going to bring something new to the table, a snapshot of random adults and their opinions, perceptions, and experiences regarding your topic, okay? And then you can analyze that data. That's your data. That's how you bring it new. But again, we're dealing in six weeks. It's very hard for research to get done. So I'm trying to compress everything so that it's doable, all right? And one component of the data collecting we're going to do is a quantitative survey. So each of you will have, now you have a research topic, you will have a specific research question. And that question, which I'll put in this announcement, you're going to fill in the blank. I'm going to give you the question and you're going to fill in the blank. And that question is going to be, what are some of the opinions, uh, comma, perceptions, comma, and experiences regarding blank? Okay. If it's marijuana use, if it's regarding the COVID-19 virus, if it's regarding uh, climate change, you're going to fill in the blank. And then comma, revealed in a survey of random adults. It's a very important question to get every, all the T's crossed and the I's dotted because you're asking a specific question. What are some of the opinions, experiences, perceptions, experiences? Those are general, but it's covered. That's what you're asking. Regarding your topic, you're, you're articulated. Now, that's what you're doing. But hey, comma, revealed in a survey. That tells whoever would be looking at this, that this research was done by survey, okay? But we go further, revealing a survey of who? We're doing health and fitness in a survey of physical trainers, of dietitians? No, a survey of random adults, okay? Question mark. It's very important, and I'm going to put that in the announcement. Uh, get back to me if you have any questions about it. But so as you're thinking about how you're going to bring it down, as you move through now these steps, think about, your topic in those terms so that you don't have to go wide with, wow, climate change. Oh, my God, what are you going to do? Well, now you're thinking about climate change in terms of, you know, what are some of the opinions, perceptions, and experiences of random adults regarding climate change? So now you can think about climate change happening in the home or just simply belief systems, ideology. You might, you might compare and contrast, correlate it with, you know, political beliefs, religious beliefs, um, scientific belief systems. And we'll get into that when we do your survey. Don't worry about it now. Okay, and it's quantitative survey. What does that mean? Quantitative. There's no open-ended questions. You're not going to say, what do you think about climate change and let people ramble? No. You're going to do multiple choice. You're going to choose all that apply. You're going to do 
You're going to do, you know, uh, Likert scales, and I'm going to show you how to do it, okay? So don't worry. The only open-ended question you're going to ask is age, okay? All right, so that's how we're going to continue to look at this big, you know, the paper that we're doing, right? All right, so Easter egg number two, capitalize the disciplines. I think that's a repeat, but it's important. Capitalize the disciplines, but not the word discipline. All right. Okay. So for the readings, how am I doing? 15 minutes. <laughs> okay. For the readings, chapter six, seven, and eight. Important to read these. Very important. Okay. Chapter six, basic research methods. They talk about things in here that's very important. All these bolded terms and concepts are very important. Okay. The research question, the literature review. Okay. Different kinds of way to look at research. But then they talk about quantitative and he brings up surveys in here. Okay, pay special attention to that. We're not doing qualitative, but understand it because qualitative is great. As you move forward in academic or however, qualitative is a great thing to, um, is it coming off my computer? I guess it is. Um, uh, mixed methods and a case study, descriptive. Uh, all these are excellent. We're going to do a quantitative survey as our, as our methodology and design. Okay. Talk about research goals here. A lot of this is, is deeper research type of concepts. We're going to stay kind of skimming across the surface, but you need to introduce yourself to these things. All right. Quantitative research design, hypothesis, things like that. Target population. Yours is simple. It's random adults. Uh, it kind of disregards some of these questions. They're pretty weak. On page 62, and then he talks about experiments, qualitative methods, ethnography, one of my favorite methods. It's great. It's about immersing researchers, immersing themselves in a culture or environment where they become almost part of it and they analyze. It's very difficult, takes a long time, well worth it. Okay. Um, and we get into other things. Ethics, you should have read the IRB, and it talks about that in here. Getting into chapter seven. The conditions for interdisciplinary research, these are good things to go through because you're going to do interdisciplinary research. All right. Talk about a cognitive map. Perhaps you did mapping in your 301. We've done that in our 301, and uh, it's something that you're mapping, a uh, cognitive map of your concentration slash discipline. Uh, get in, you know, so you're mapping the problem. You're not going to do any of this, but you're going to look at this because it's important to understand the context of what you should be doing behind the scenes with your project. Now, methods of integration, uh, chapter eight, go through that. You talk about transfers, mechanism, types of transfers, bridges. It's a very short chapter, okay? So do the reading because it's going to inform you and how you're going to, to quiz number two. Okay, quiz number two is two questions, 30 points a piece. You're going to answer them, and um, brevity will not be rewarded. Neither will kind of stretching it out either, you know, like blowing it up. Right about, right, they're easy questions to answer, okay? Uh, but they take thought, and they take applying the concepts. For example, if you do those without reading, I'll be able to tell like that, okay? So that's how we do that. And by the way... It's the last quiz of the course. How's that? Nice, huh? Okay, so the emphasis is on the paper itself, okay? It's the steps, the one, two, three, four, and five, and doing the research, okay? I will be getting more into Tanner step two in the next video for Wednesday or Thursday. Wednesday, I think I'm taking a drive down to Southern Arizona because I'm just stir crazy. Uh, I'll see about that though. But Tanner step two, I'll get into how, to, how we're talking about that, as well as how to use sources. Um, I'm going to kind of see what happens in step one in terms of you citing sources. They're extremely important. And it's important what sources you use and, and how you cite them and you find them properly. Peer-reviewed primary sources are different than Forbes.com, Cron.com, Investopedia.com. Remember what .com stands for, right? It's commercial. Commercial means what? Money. Money means bias, revenue, bias. So there are cases where you can use those as sources, but primary sources are what I've been mentioning here about published studies, okay, done by peer-reviewed panels that look at a research report. 
So these are the ones I want you to emphasize, and we'll get into that a lot more in step three and four, okay? But step one now today, that's due today, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing yours. There's only four that were turned in so far, so there's about 20 to go, I think. And, um, and, and we'll go that way. Okay, so we're hitting 20 minutes. That's not bad because I'm going to leave the re rest of this. <clears throat> Again, make sure you get a hold of me with your questions, comments, concerns. Um, push back at me. That's fine. I seriously don't mind it. Uh, let's see. What else do we have here? That's about it, you guys and gals. Um, I hope you're doing well. Uh, Easter egg number three is site sources. I probably should have put that in the next video, but site sources. And that does not mean site. It means C-I-T-E sources. And you should do that. If you make claims, remember this as you're writing, whether it's step one, two, any, if you're making claims that this topic, this problem is, is blankety, blankety, blank, who says so? You? You, you're not going to listen to me. I mean, what do we have This we're in this in this stepped up academic world where we need to back up our claims, right? Okay. Or if you say the world is flat, the earth is flat, back it up. Bring it. What do you got? I'm open to hear about it, right? And remember, don't use the word prove. You're not going to prove anything, okay? You're going to – and stay away from absolutes. I think that's it. All right, 21 minutes and a half. Forks up. Keep cool, 113 here yesterday, bad, peace.